Alongside Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price from here in Atlanta, wrapping up SEC Media Day's coverage for VolQuest. And, and Brent, overall themes today from Josh Heupel for you. Well, I think that, you know, NIL, which was everybody's theme, and I thought Josh Heupel for, the, for maybe the first time was, was more open about it. And, and he's never been against it, but I mean, he talked about you're gonna to need to have a collective to work with. He never mentioned a collective by name, but he talked about the need for that, and that's part of it. And, and about so, the big New York trip for Spire yeah, and Hendon Hooker and Cedric Tillman as well. Right, and, and how important that was, the education factor and the transparency needed for your current players, you know, and, and, and taking care of your current players and how NIL is a factor and is always gonna be a factor for those guys. So, I mean, he was, I was wondering how he would handle it, how much he would discuss about it. He was pretty open with it all day long. Talked about hope, believe, and expect. Got three different type of teams. Says that they put in the work. He believes they're going to be an expect to win type of team. Yeah, and I thought that was an interesting. I've not heard it put that way, but you know, you have some teams that hope to win, some teams that believe they win, and some teams that expect to win. He wants to be a team that expects to win. Move it in that direction. I don't think he's come close to announcing this team as a finished product or anything like that, but feels like they have taken another step in learning how hard you have to work what's required every day, and the importance of the small details, which are gonna be the things, and, and Cedric Tillman talked about this, if you're gonna beat some of these teams that you're trying to catch, you, you can't do the little things wrong. You have to take care of all the small details. Listening to the players today, uh, you know, it just seems like they're just kind of a, a more confident group. I mean, admittedly, Hendon Hooker talked about how both he and Cedric Tillman hit it off because they're both more reserved guys, quiet guys but I thought they were a little more forthcoming than they normally are when they've met with the media before. They just kind of rolled in here, talked, and, and, and did their deal, and I think there's a lot of confidence with those kids. Well, a year ago this time, they weren't sure what they were getting themselves into. They sort of knew, but they didn't really know. And, and Cedric Tillman was very candid about that today, and, and I was impressed with Cedric Tillman. He, he admitted he went to the coaching staff after the Florida game and said, you know what? get me the ball. I want to be the number one guy. I mean, let, let's let's get me the ball more. And, and obviously his season by numbers clearly took off big time after that. Um, and he talked about how he's embracing that role. He's embracing a leadership role and he wants to be the guy. He knows he's going to get double teamed. He knows he's going to draw the team's best corners. He said, it's on me to get open. And, and, and I just think there's a comfort level because one, they're veteran guys, okay? They've been through a lot, both of those two guys are. And even Trayvon Flowers, they're comfortable in their own skin, but they're also comfortable in the program because there's a clear identity in this program, which this time a year ago there wasn't. Yeah, when, when you look at you know other receivers in this offense, people that were asked about today, you know, obviously Jalen Hyatt, but number one on that list was really Brew McCoy. You know, C Coach Heupel did acknowledge that there's another hurdle for him that he has to get over to be eligible for this fall, but you know, it certainly feels like that, that at least things are trending in the right direction, but, you know, nothing's done. No, you never say never. And, and again, he acknowledged there's one more, one more step for them to take place that, for that to get done. But everybody who talked about him believes he's going to be able to help this team a lot. They like what he's gotten done this summer. And Josh Heupel talked about how much he's just kind of jumped in and been a part. He's embraced and, and um, really bought into the program right out of the gate and ready to go. So uh, hopefully he can get over that final hur hurdle for Tennessee and, and for Cedric Tillman because he does need help on the other side. He needs a Robin if he's going to be Batman. Yeah. And uh, who is that guy going to be? Maybe it's Jalen Hyde. He really could use two guys, an inside slot guy and an outside guy opposite of him. Uh, and sounds like Brew McCoy is the guy that Hendon Hooker and Cedric Tillman both believe can do some big things for them. Hype was asked about some rule changes, about you know when they start the 25-second the clock, um, you know, after an incompletion, so things like that. <laughs> he was kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, need to figure out a way to, you know, fix the, the fake cramps and the fake injuries before we worry about little things like that. I asked him specifically, I said, you know, if you had to, you had to be the commissioner for a day, and you could pick Tennessee's permanent three opponents in the 6-3 model, who would you pick? Alabama, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky, which is a smart way to look at it. It's one tough, sure. and then, you know, a moderate and, and, and more and more of a winnable game. Yeah. I think also the big question is going to be, first of all, how many games are they going to play? I mean, I think it's a good answer by Josh Heupel on a good question. Smart to put the Alabama game in there for the traditionalists and those things. But the bigger question is... He's smart enough to acknowledge, you know, who you put in depends on how old you are. Right, that's exactly right. I mean, it was a good answer to, to, a, to a good question about 
you know, what this thing's going to look like. But this league's got to figure out how you're going to play eight or nine games, first and foremost. And, and when are you going to move to that point? And I, I think that's, that's a much harder answer to a question than any of us thought it was going to be. I think we all thought that's going to come in Destin and they're going to be going. These coaches are really divided on whether you're going to play eight or nine. The commissioner talked about it earlier this week. Hey, we got to make sure we can protect the Florida, Florida states. We need to still be playing those types of games. If you do that, how many conference games are you going to be able to play? There's a long ways to go to, to get to the end of that. I did think his, his answer uh, off the cuff, he brought it up about the cramping thing. He, he's always talking about, ah, I'm, his on the record answer to that specific question has kind of been, well, it's out of my control, this, that, or the other. You could tell by that answer today that, that, that the fake injury thing really bothers an up-tempo coach. And I think the more he's thought about it this offseason, the more it bothers him. Well, that's it from here in Atlanta. The unofficial start to football season is wrapping up. We have media day in Knoxville, that being next Sunday, the 31st, and then the first day of fall camp coming up on August 1st. He's Brent Hubs. I'm Austin Price.